So clap your hands and wave your arms. Play the drums and then rock the guitar. So clap your hands and wave your arms. You can play the drums and then rock the guitar.
God's favorite. Why would you say that? Today we are going to be learning how God changed the heart of Peter, the heart of Peter to accept people who were different from him. Let's see what Penelope, Penelope Pinwheel has to say. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. You are tuned in to the Summit Kids Bible Network Channel One, and we are bringing real Bible stories to real kids. Welcome to this special episode of Christian Conversations. Our topic for today is God Shows No Favoritism. In the last chapter of Acts, we were introduced to a new character named Paul. Paul, who used to be Saul, showed a great deal of prejudice towards the followers of Jesus Christ. Kids, prejudice means to dislike someone based off imagined facts that are not true. Prejudice causes someone to be hateful towards people who are different from them. Last week, we learned that Paul was on his way to Damascus to persecute more Christians. However, Jesus himself appeared to Paul and not only changed his heart, but gave him the ministry of reconciliation. We will talk about that in a later episode. Today, we will hear from our guests that God is very much interested in changing our hearts towards the people he loves, even if we have prejudice against them. Both of our guests have traveled from the past to be with us today in our studio. Thank you for traveling from the past to be with us today in 2020. Cornelius and Peter, before we start our conversation, 
Let's have our wonderful guests introduce themselves. Let's start with you first, Cornelius. Greetings. My name is Cornelius, and I am Centurion of the Italian Regiment. I am devout and God-fearing man who prays to God and gives to the poor on a regular basis. Interesting, Cornelius. That's very interesting. Okay, Peter, let's hear from you. My original name is Simon. I am from the town of Bethsaida, but when I became a believer, Jesus called me Peter. I was the man who, called, who was called to walk on water, but I got scared and almost drowned. I also am the one who denied Jesus, but here I am now. I am forgiven, and I am preaching the gospel. Hmm. Well, that's very, very, very interesting, Peter. Okay, so today we are talking about favoritism. Kids, favoritism means to give preference to one person over another because of their, I don't know, nationality, um, their social class, maybe how much money they have. My sources tell me that even the disciples who followed Jesus struggled with favoritism. Is that true, Peter? Yes, that is true. The disciples did not believe Gentiles had all of the privileges Jewish people had. Let me explain. Jewish people believed they were God's chosen people, a special treasure. If you are not a Jewish person, you were considered a Gentile. Gentile means all nations. The word Gentile does not describe who someone is, but rather who someone is not. They are not a Jewish person. If I may add, Penelope, Gentiles do not worship the one true God. Gentiles worship many idols and did not make God happy. One thing that made Jewish people and Gentile people different were the food that they ate. The food was either clean or unclean. Hmm, that is so interesting, Cornelius. Thank you for pointing that out to us. Well, let's look at this diagram, folks. This diagram shows us some differences between the Jew and the Gentile. First, the Jews worshipped the one true and only God. They followed God's laws, and they had some food restrictions. Is that correct, Cornelius? Like Cornelius just pointed out to us, Gentiles worship many gods. A lot of gods, kids, a lot of gods. They followed man-made laws, and they ate whatever they wanted. We're going to cut to a short cartoon clip to tell the story, kids. This is a time segment, so I'm going to enjoy my coffee while Jeffrey rolls the clip. Cornelius was a man who lived in Caesarea. He was an officer in the Roman army, and he and everyone in his house worshiped God. Cornelius helped other people, and he always prayed to God. One afternoon, Cornelius saw a vision of an angel of God coming to him. The angel said, Cornelius. Cornelius was afraid. He looked at the angel and said, what is it? The angel said, God has heard your prayers and he has seen how you help others. Then the angel instructed Cornelius to send for a man named Peter, who was in the city of Joppa. Cornelius sent two of his servants and one soldier to Joppa. The next day, as the servants and soldiers were nearing the city, Peter went up on the roof of the house to pray. He was hungry, but while he was waiting for the meal, Peter saw a vision. In this vision, Peter saw something like a large sheep coming down from heaven. In the sheep were all kinds of animals, reptiles, and birds. Then a voice said to him, Get up, Peter. Kill and eat. No, Lord, Peter said. I have never eaten anything that is not clean or not used for food. Again, 
a voice said to him, God has made these clean. Do not call them unfit to eat. This happened three times, and then the whole thing was taken up into heaven. Peter tried to understand what the vision meant. Then the men Cornelius had sent arrived at the gate. They explained that Cornelius had seen a vision, and an angel instructed him to send for Peter. So the next day, Peter went with the men to Caesarea. When Peter got to Cornelius' house, he began to speak. Peter explained that God does not consider people to be better than others. God had sent good news to the Israelites. Jesus is Lord of all. Everyone who believes in Jesus will have their sins forgiven, Peter said. While Peter said this, the Holy Spirit came down on those who heard the message. Not just the Jewish people, but the Gentiles or non-Jews too. The Jewish <laughs> believers were amazed. Cornelius, his friends, and his relatives were baptized in the name of Jesus. And Peter stayed with him for a few days. God showed Peter that just as there is no clean and unclean food, there are no clean and unclean people. God calls believers to tell everyone the good news about Jesus, no matter who they are or where they come from. Jesus is Lord of all. Hmm, that video was very interesting. Thank you, Jeffrey, for rolling that clip. You're great. We have a viewer from Hackensack who just called our phone lines and they want to ask you, Peter, a question. Caller, caller, are you there? What is your name, caller? And ask Peter your question. Hi, my name is Joel and I have a question. What are some ways I can show the love of Christ to people who are different than me? Hi, Joel. I think it's a good example to find something you have in common, like favorite toys, games, or TV shows. Find common ground and then tell people that Jesus loves them and has a plan for their life. How about you start there? Thank you, Mr. Peter. Thank you, Mr. Cornelius. Thank you, Miss Penelope. My mom loves your show and your long, pretty hair. Tell your mother I really appreciate the compliment. Call her Joe. <laughs> okay, Cornelius, Cornelius, how do you feel since God has torn down the wall between Jew and Gentile? Penelope, I feel great. Now I know that God has fully accepted me. When I heard the gospel and got saved, I was told I had to follow all of these rules and rituals before I was considered being saved. I am very grateful that God has taught me that it is not okay to be prejudiced against his people, the people he has created. God has no favorites, neither should we. If we have prejudice towards people, we are truly not doing God's word. Before our time is up, kids, I want to share these final points with you all. First point. We are all prone to some type of prejudice in our hearts. Second point, only God can break down prejudice. And he wants to break down those prejudices so that he can spread the gospel through us to a whole bunch of different people who don't look like us. Third point, when God points our prejudice out, we must submit to him and change. Last point, Somebody is dependent on you to accept them so that they can experience the love of Jesus. Peter, Cornelius, thank you so much for traveling from the past to be with us today in 2020. You really taught us that God does not show favoritism and that he loves all of us equally. I really, really, really enjoyed our conversation today. 
Also, thank you to our caller, Joel, out there, who asked that wonderful question. Kids are really involved in the gospel and in the things of God. So, kids, call in. Send your questions. Comment below. Let us know what you learned from this show today. Well, until next time, this has been Penelope Pinwheel with the Summit Kids Bible Network, Channel 1 bringing real Bible stories to real kids. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye now. That interview was amazing. God shows no favoritism. If we show favoritism towards the people, then we won't be able to share the love of God. Jesus came for everyone, and his love brings us together. That's, uh, we can't forget that. Oh, no, we almost forgot the kids' Zoom uh, meeting. We're playing card games. That sounds like a ton of fun. See you all there. Bye-bye now. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs>